In the previous video I said we're going to talk about other articles, but some of the articles in the agreement, I don't think it's really important to talk about all those articles. And I don't want to waste your time on a lot of things. So let's make it short. We're going to talk about the outro and how it technically works and how you can use it. So you can see this is the outro and there is a trick here. Most people don't realize it and I'm going to talk about it, especially in this case that you need to know about. And it's a government law. And I'm going to explain to you how it works so you can get a general idea of what some people do in order to get rid of some cases or make sure that they provide um, prevent some cases from getting to court because it's expensive. So what you need to keep in mind is when you have a contract, you have a contract, right? If you sign a contract, you sign a contract. Like I said, you have the intro, you have the body and you have the outro. The thing is most of the time in the outro, people put something really important and that something really important is government law. The reason I'm saying that is because if you are from con country X and the other person is country A, I, I, the problem is which law apply to this contract? The country of X or the country of I? And that's important. Or the state. If you're in the United States and you live in a different state, which state's law apply? And that's really important. Most people underestimate that because if you are in, um, let's say, in country A and the other person is country B and B say, okay, you know what, A, the law in your country apply on this contract. That means if something goes wrong, we don't have anything in a contract, we're going to look at the law in your country. If you have a problem as B, you need to go do some research about that law. It's going to cost you a lot of money. Same apply for A. If the country of A apply, then um, A need to do some research about the law and see what apply. And that can make the situation complicated. And another thing is when you want to go to court, maybe the contract say, hey, you need to go to the court in A's country. And most people don't want to do that. Now these days, it's easy to create a contract online, but it's hard to go to the court because some people don't they, know, they don't have enough money to go and um, do something outside the country, like going to court outside the country. So you can prevent this by reading a contract really well. So if you look at the contract here, you have government law, and then you have the signatures. And here, you need to make sure that's in your country. If it's in your country, it will be a lot cheaper and it can make sure that when something is wrong, you can hire a lawyer in your country to fix things. So if I'm B, I'll be like, hey, the law from my country apply for this situation. So that's it. That's what I was wanted to change. But it's a big problem. The thing is, most time when people get a contract, there is already something about the government law. You cannot change it. That's what most people think and that's the problem you can change it you can discuss with them hey you know what we want to change it and if they don't agree with it you can be like okay you know what when something happens we're gonna see what the international civil code say about this let me know if you have question about it or if there are some things that are unclear let me know just go on the discord and ask me question directly if you're new to this channel subscribe subscribe seriously subscribe you will help me a lot and if you like this video, like it. I will appreciate it. See you in the next one.